Greetings, everybody. Learning is a hobby here. Uh, I want to go over my summary for the last section in Chapter 5 in Tau's Analysis 1, um, which is Section 5.6. So we'll, this video will be this, my summary for that. And then we just have one more video for Chapter 5 uh, for the exercise set, which hopefully I'll be able to get out by the weekend. So um, let's jump into it. Let's get through the notes and then... Uh, I can get on to doing the uh, the exercises. <laughs> okay, so here's my summary of. Sorry, just moving some things around on my screen. Uh, here's my summary of the chapter. Uh, sorry, the chapter section. Uh, so this is five point six, and basically this is on exponentiating a, a real number. To uh, actually, we, we start out with exponentiating a real number to a natural number, and then we move on to. Uh, Exponenti exponentiating a real number to a rational. So let's just, let's start with the definition. <clears throat> okay, so definition 5.6.1. Uh, let's see, can, maybe I'll make this a little bigger. Okay, it says, uh, let X be a real number. To raise X to the power zero, we define X to the zero to be equal to one. Now suppose recursively that X to the N has been defined for some natural number N, then we define X to the N plus one to be X to the N times X. So just how we defined exponentiating, uh, you know, rationals, for example, to to uh, natural number powers. Now, now we're just allowing the base to also be a, a real number. Right. Definition 5.6.2, exponen exponentiating a real number by an integer. So now uh, we'll move on to, you know, what happens if the uh, the power is negative. Let X be a non-zero real number. Uh, we need that because, remember, you're, you know, you're not allowed to divide by zero, right? Then for any negative integer, negative N, we define X to the minus N to be equal to 1 over X to the N. All right. And then we, we have our first proposition for the section. 5.6.3. Uh, All the properties in for, uh, Proposition 4.3.10 and 4.3.12 remain valid if X and Y are assumed to be real numbers instead of rational numbers. Let me go back to Section 4.3, my, my summary for Section 4.3, just to remind you of what those uh, propositions say. So this is 4.3.10, uh, which is properties of exponentiation part one from chapter four. Let X, Y be rational numbers and let N, M be natural numbers. Then there's a bunch of parts here. Uh, part A says X to the N times X to the M is X to the N plus M. X to the N to the M is X to the N M and X, Y to the N is X to the N times Y to the N. Part B says, suppose N is greater than zero. Then we have X to the N equals zero if and only if X is zero. Part C says, if X is greater than or equal to Y is greater than or equal to zero, then X to the N is greater than or equal to Y to the N is greater than or equal to zero. And if X is greater than Y is greater than or equal to zero and N greater than zero, then x to the n greater than y to the n greater than or equal to zero. And part D says we have the absolute value of x to the n is equal to the absolute value of x raised to the nth power. Uh, and then 4312 is this proposition here, which is properties of exponentiation part two from chapter four. Um, let x, y be non-zero rational numbers and let n, m be integers. Then part A says x to the n. Oh, well, I won't read it out again. It's um, uh, the rules of exponentiation, right? The exponentiation laws. And uh, they're, they're very similar. So I'll just let you, you can pause your screen and look at this. I'm not going to read them all out. Um, but that's section, uh, Proposition 4312. All right. So what Proposition 563 is um, is implying is that uh, uh, those those theorems remain valid if, if X and Y are replaced with uh, real numbers. All right. Uh, now he doesn't actually give a proof in the book. Uh, he gives a meta proof. So I, if it's good enough for for Tao, it's good enough for me. Uh, just because it's it would be tedious and really unnecessary to go through the the proof of those two again, just by just replacing with real numbers. Because well, I'll just read out the meta proof and you can see why. So uh, this is from Tao's book. This is not my words. This is Tao's words. Uh, looking back, we see the proof of Proposition 4310 and 4312 rely on the laws of algebra and the laws of order for the rationals, which are Proposition 424 and Proposition 429. By Proposition 4, uh, 5311 and 547 and the identity X times X inverse equals X inverse times X equals 1, we know that all these laws of algebra and order continue to hold for real numbers as well as 
uh, the rationals. Thus, we can modify the proof of proposition 4310 and 4312 to hold in the case when X and Y are real numbers. So that's why he calls it a meta proof, because uh, he doesn't actually do it. He just says the the, the proofs rely on sort of the similar um, theorems. So it, it holds because the, the proof of one uh, is an exact will be exactly analogous to the other, but with replaced with real numbers. Okay, definition 564. <clears throat> uh, let x be greater than or equal to zero. Um, and let uh, n greater than or equal to one be a positive integer. We define x to the one over n, also known as the nth root of x by the formula. Uh, sorry, I just want to make sure that okay i thought i st i set up the volume knob <laughs> uh okay let x greater than or equal to zero and let n greater than or equal to one be a positive integer we define x to the one over n also known as the nth root of x by the formula uh x to the one over n is we're defining it to be the supremum of the set of all real numbers y such that y is greater than or equal to zero and y to the n is greater than or equal to x and we often write um, square root of, uh, sorry, we often write square root of x for x to the one half. Okay, there's a note here. Uh, we'll leave the definition of nth roots of negative numbers undefined for the rest of the text. This is Tao saying this. Uh, one can define nth roots of negative numbers after introducing complex numbers, but uh, Tao says he, he's not going to do that in this book, so we don't have to worry about it uh, in, in volume one, at least. Uh, I don't re remember if he goes over complex numbers in volume two, but at least in volume one, we're not going to worry about that. Okay, lemma 565, existence of nth roots. Let x be greater than or equal to zero be a non-negative real, and let n greater than or equal to one be a positive integer. Then the set E, uh, which we define like this, y in R, y greater than or equal to zero, and y to the n less than or equal to x is non-empty and is also bounded above. In particular, x to the one over n is a real number. So here's the proof. Um, zero obviously is an element of E since zero is greater than or equal to itself, and zero to the n is equal to zero, which is less than or equal to x. Therefore, E is not empty because zero is uh, an element of E. We show that E is bounded above for each x uh, in R, x greater than or equal to zero by breaking the set of all positive, uh, sorry, the set of all non-negative real numbers into two cases. <clears throat> all right, case one, uh, x less than or equal to one. All right, that's the first case. Assume for the sake of contradiction that there's y in E such that y is greater than one. I'll explain what that red star meets, means in a second. Then y to the n greater than one to the n greater than or equal to one greater than or equal to x. Um, that just follows by the you know rules of uh, the order and uh, uh, the, the theorems that we had for um, exponentiating real numbers that we talked about a, a, sec, a few seconds ago. Uh, this contradicts that y is less than or equal to x. Therefore, if x is less than or equal to 1, then 1 is an upper bound for e. All right. And then case 2, x is greater than 1. And again, I'll explain what that red star means in a second. Uh, assume there is a y in e such that y is greater than x, then y to the n greater than x to the n greater than x. This contradicts that y to the n is less than or equal to x. Therefore, if x is greater than 1, then e is bounded above by x. And since uh, case 1 and case 2 exhaust all x greater than or equal to 0, e is bounded above for all x greater than or equal to 0, and therefore e has a least upper bound for all x greater than or equal to 0, which means that um, the supremum of all of those sets for, you know, a particular n and a particular x um, is a real number, right? So in other words, x to the 1 over n is a real number for all x greater than or equal to 0. Uh, and then here's what I what I meant by those stars. Um, tau in the proof in the book, uh, by the parts where I, I have the, the red star, asks the reader to prove that. So, but I, I didn't actually go ahead and do that because it's very straightforward. Uh, you just, it's just two, two very simple proofs by induction. Uh, I, I just skipped it because I didn't feel like writing it out, but it's very straightforward. Um, so I just say here, the two properties can be proven by induction. Um, okay, lemma 566, let x, y greater than or equal to zero be non-negative reals and let n, m be greater than or equal to one be positive integers. Then we have a bunch of parts here. 
a y equals x to the one over n, then y to the n is x. B, conversely, if y to the n is equal to x, then y is the nth root of x. Part C, x to the 1 over n is a non-negative real number and is positive if and only if x is positive. Part D, we have x greater than y if and only if x to the 1 over n is greater than y to the 1 over n. Part E, if x is greater than 1, then x to the 1 over k is a decreasing function of k, where k ranges over the positive integers. That is to say, x to the 1 over k is less than x to the 1 over l whenever k is greater than l. And if x is greater than 0, less than 1, then x to the 1 over k is an increasing function of k. In other words, x to the 1 over k is greater than x to the 1 over l whenever k is greater than l. And if x is equal to 1, then x to the 1 over k is 1 for all k. Right, part f x to the x times y to the one over n is equal to x to the one over n times y to the one over n. And finally, part g we have x to the one over n to the one over m is equal to x to the one over n m. Right, and the proof is proof is left for uh, to the exercise set, so we'll do that the proof for that in the the video the next video. Excuse me, when uh, I get around to the exercise set. All right. Uh, then there's a proposition, uh, you know, again, when Tao says says something and then asks why, uh, you know, that's your hint to uh, prove it yourself. So this is something that Tao says in th the section and he asks why. So I'm just proving it here. Uh, the statement is uh, let X greater than or equal to zero be a non-negative real number. Then X to the one is equal to X is equal to X to the one over one. All right. Uh, and the proof just follows from uh, lemma 566 part A. Let me just show you that's uh, this part here. So y equals x to the 1 over n, then y to the n equals x. Uh, so y equals x to the 1 over 1 implies that y equals y to the 1 equals x equals x to the 1. And that's the, the proof. OK. Uh, one consequence from lemma 566 part B is another proof of the cancellation law from proposition 4.312 part C and proposition 5.6.3, right? And here, this is not uh, something that Tao proves in the book. This is another thing that he asks the reader to do. So this is my proof of that. If Y and Z are positive and Y to the N equals Z to the N, then Y equals Z. All right, so here's the proof. Let y z greater than zero, n greater than or equal to one, then y to the n equals z to the n, then there is x greater than zero, such that y to the n equals x equals z to the n, which implies y, y is x to the one over n, and z is x to the one over n, which implies that y equals z by 5.6.6 part b, which implies that y equals z. All right, so that, that proves cancellation. Okay, just a note, the above only works if y and z are positive. For example, if you have negative three squared, uh, that's equal to nine, and so is three squared, but notice that negative three is not three. So it only works if the, the bases are positive or non-negative. All right, then we get a definition, 5.6.7. Let x greater than zero be a positive real number and let q be a rational number. To define x to the q, we write q equals a over b for some integer a and some positive integer b and define x to the q to be x to the one over b all raised to the a power. All right, and then again, uh, tau says this this statement here and asks the reader to prove it so i'm doing that here the proposition is this every rational number q whether positive negative or zero can be written in the form q equals a over b where a is an integer and b is a positive integer right so here's my proof uh clearly zero is zero over one then definition 426 and definition 422 imply the proposition for q greater than zero and q less than zero. I, I, I didn't bring up chapter my chapter four summary, so but you can look back in the videos uh, to see what those say. Or if you have the book, you could just look it up. Uh, but it follows directly from those um, those definitions in chapter four. All right, lemma 5.6.8. Uh, here we want to show that, uh, uh, well, that uh, raising uh, real numbers to um, to rational powers is well defined. Remember, because rational uh, every rational number is part of an, equ an equivalence class, and we want to make sure that changing the the um, representative from the equivalence class doesn't change the value. 
So that, that's what the lemma here is saying. Let A, A prime be integers and B, B prime be positive integers such that A over B is A prime over B prime and let X be a positive real number. Then we have X to the one over B prime raised to the A prime, A prime is equal to X to the one over B raised to the A. All right, and then uh, here's the proof. And again, Tau asks a bunch of, I think he, there's a few places where you ask the reader why. So that's where those those star, those star red stars are. Um, that's what they represent, places in the proof where Tau asked the reader to prove it. And I I did it here. So I just marked the, you know, marked it with a star. So here we, we pr proceed by cases. So part one, let's say that A is zero. Let B and B prime be positive integers and A prime be an integer such that A over B equals A prime over B prime. Then that implies that A B prime is A prime B, just by the way that we define the equivalence classes for the rationals. And that implies uh, zero is A prime B, which implies that A prime equals zero by cancellation. Uh, let X be a positive real number, then X to the one over B, X to the one over B prime are real numbers, then X to the one over B to the A is equal to X to the one over B to the zero, which is one. And same thing for X to the one over B prime raised to the A prime. That's also equal to X to the one over B prime to the zero, which is one. By definition 5.6.1, that implies that X to the one over B to the A equals X to the one over B prime to the A prime, right? And then case number two is A is positive. Let A over B equal A prime over B prime. Then again, by the, the way we define equivalence classes of rationals, then zero is less than A B prime equals A prime B, which implies A prime B is greater than zero, which implies A prime is greater than zero. That follows just from the order, uh, the order relation. I forget with what proposition it was in chapter four, but there was a proposition uh, that's said if you multiply, if you multiply by, by positive numbers uh, and inequality by posit positive uh, rationals, it doesn't change the the uh, order. So then x to the one over b raised to the one over a prime equals one x to the one over b a prime, which is the same thing as x to the one over a b prime because a b prime is equal to a prime b by the equivalence relation. Uh, then that equals x to the one over b prime raised to the one over a which is equal to some number y, then y to the a prime is equal to x to the one over b, and y to the a is equal to x to the one over b prime. All right, and then just raising both sides of those two things to either a or a prime, you get that y to the a prime a is equal to x to the one over b to the a, and it's also equal to x to the one over b prime to the a prime, which shows that the two expressions are equal to each other. Right, and then the last case is uh, if A is negative, since A is less than zero, that implies that negative A is positive. Then if A over B equals A prime over B prime, then negative A over B is the same thing as negative A prime over B prime, which is greater than zero. Then by part two, since a, uh, negative A over B and negative A prime over B prime are positive, that part two applies here. So X to the one over B to the negative A is equal to X to the one over B prime to the negative A prime. And then you just take reciprocals, one over X to the one over B to the A equals one over X to the one over B prime to the A prime. Uh, and then you could just uh, multiply through by the LCD, or you can, you know, just take the reciprocal, uh, which is shows that the two sides are equal to each other, and that's the proof. So um, exponentiation by of a non-negative real number to a rational is well defined. Okay, then there's another uh, part here that. Uh, Tau asks the reader to prove. So here's the statement that he gives. The above definition is consistent with our old definition for x to the one over n and for x to the n. Uh, so here I'm just showing that. So first assume that n is an integer, then n is also rational. Every integer is a rational, right? Because it's uh, in the equivalence class n over one, right? Then x to the n is x to the n over one, which is equal to x to the one over one to the n. Right, so the both ways that we defined those things, just they they mean the same thing. Let and then uh, let s equal the supremum of the set y, uh, real numbers y such that y is greater than or equal to zero, and y to the n less than or equal to x. Then x to the one over n we defined to be equal to that set. At, right, so that number s. Uh, but s is the same thing as s to the first power, which is equal to x to the one over n to the first power, and that that's our definition that we just talked about above a, a few minutes ago. So that shows that uh, it does you know the the definitions are consistent with each other. 
All right, uh, lemma 5.6.9, let x, y greater than zero be positive reals and let q, r be rationals. Then, um, you know, all the all the properties of exponentiation hold uh, in those cases. So part A says x to the q is a positive real. B, x to the q plus r is x to the q times x to the r. And x to the q to the r is equal to x to the qr. x to the negative q is 1 over x to the q. If q is greater than 0, then x greater than 0 if and only if x to the q greater than y to the q. Um, if x is greater than 1, then x to the q is greater than x to the r, if and only if q is greater than r. If x is less than 1, then x to the q greater than x to the r, if and only if q is less than r. And part f says x to the x times y to the q is x to the q times y to the q. And again, this is another lemma where uh, the proof is left for the reader in the exercise set. So we'll get to that uh, in the next video when we when we do the exercises. Right, and then and then there's just one last note that he has for this section. Uh, we still must define real exponentiation. For for example, what he means is, if x is a positive number and y is a real number, then we ha we still haven't defined x to the y. Uh, we've defined x to the y where y was a rational but not yet a real. We uh, and he says we'll defer to this to section six point seven after we formalize the concept of a limit. So in the next chapter we'll do that. Uh, and that's section five. My summary for section five point six. Let me stop my screen share. So uh, like I said, we're almost done with chapter five. Uh, so we just have the, the exercise set to do for section 5.6. And then we'll um, move over to uh, Spivak again, and we'll look at his construction of the reels. So uh, again, I'll see you guys in the next video. Keep learning, everybody. And um, keep an eye out for the next couple of videos coming out this weekend. I'll see you then.